everyone. Today we are going over experiment 2 which is acid-base titration. Determination of the concentration of hydrochloric acid solution. Let's go everyone. Do you know how many learning outcomes in this experiment? There are four learning outcomes in this experiment. First is prepare a standard solution of oxalic acid. Second is to standardize 0.2 molar NaOH solution. Third is to determine the concentration of HCl solution. Fourth is to acquire the correct techniques of titration. Let's go to the theoretical background for this experiment. We are doing a few titrations. Titration is a laboratory technique used to determine the concentration of a solution using another solution with a known concentration. Next is about standard solution. Standard solution can be divided into two, which are, primary standard solution and secondary standard solution. Primary standard solution is solution that prepared by dissolving an accurately weighed pure solid of a known molar mass in a known volume of distilled water. We will prepare it in part A. Secondary standard solution is solution that can be determined the molarity by using primary standard solution. We will do in part B and part C. Equivalence point is the point at which the added titrant reacts completely with electrolyte. While end point is the point at which indicator change in color. There are few apparatus and chemical reagents that need to be used in this experiment. Burette, glass rod, white tile, retort stand, filter funnel, 50 ml beaker, 25 ml pipette, analytical balance, 250 ml cynical flask, 250 ml volumetric flask and 50 ml measuring cylinder. The chemical reagents used in this experiment are X molar HCl. 0.2 molar NaOH, distilled water, phenolphthalein, and hydrated oxalic acid. Let's continue with the experiment. Guide by Hi, let's start experiment two. Way to the nearest 0.0001 gram, around 3 grams of hydrated oxalic acid. Use a 50 ml beaker. Any exact value very close to 3.00 gram is fine. Add approximately 30 ml of distilled water. This is to dissolve the oxalic acid. If you find it difficult to dissolve, you can add more water to help speed up the process. Now you need to transfer the solution into a 250 ml volumetric flask. Don't forget to rinse the beaker and pour all of its content into the volumetric flask. This step ensure all solute goes into the flask. Now add distilled water up to the calibration mark. Upon reaching the mark, which is few milliliters before, use dropper to add in distilled water.
This will avoid addition of excess distilled water. Remember, if you accidentally add excess distilled water, the process needs to be repeated all over again. When you have finished, stop or and shake the flask. This enables you to get a homogeneous solution. Now you can calculate the concentration of standard oxalic acid solution. Part B This is how you wash and rinse a burette. Fill a burette with a small amount of tap water. Rotate the burette horizontally a few times. Discard the water through the stopcock. Here, you can check whether the stopcock functions properly or not. Repeat the steps before by using distilled water. This will clean the burette. Next, repeat the steps before by using the solution to be used in the titration. In this case, it is NaOH. Now fill the burette with the NaOH solution. Ensure there are no air bubbles trapped at the tip. Record the initial burette reading to two decimal places. The last number is either 0 or 5. Remember, it can be any initial reading. Not necessarily zero. Next step, this is how you wash and rinse pipette. Draw a small amount of tap water. Use a pipette filler. Rotate the pipette horizontally a few times and discard the water through the tip. Repeat the steps before by using distilled water. Now repeat the steps before with the solution to be used. That is the oxalic acid solution that you prepared in part A. Now, pipette 25 ml of oxalic acid from part A.
To complete the pipetting process, touch the tip of the pipette to the side of the flask. However, do not push or blow the last drop at the pipette tip. It must remain in the pipette. Now add one drop of phenolphthalein. Place a white tile underneath the flask. This enables the color change to be clearly observed. Titrate the acid with the sodium hydroxide solution from the burette. Swirl the flask continuously. From time to time, rinse the unreacted solution on the wall of the conical flask and also at the tip of the burette. Upon reaching the end point, a temporary pink solution will appear. It fades, however, when the solution is swirled. Continue your titration, but now slowly, until a pale pink color is obtained. If you obtain a pale pink color and the color remain for more than 30 seconds, that is your end point. Record the final burette reading to two decimal places. Refill your NaOH into the burette to continue with the next titration. Repeat the whole process for three times. Tabulate the data in the data sheet. And you can calculate the molarity of the NaOH solution. Now part C. You are given unknown HCl solution. Pipette 25 ml of the given HCl solution in which the concentration is unknown. Add one drop of phenolphthalein. Repeat the steps from 5 to 10 as in part B. Again, tabulate the data in the data sheet. And you should be able to calculate the concentration of HCl. That's it people. All the best with your calculation. Experiment is done. See you again.